Hi there. My name is Aaron Lanterman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech. And in this lecture of EC3400 Analog Electronics, we're going to take a look at the first of two theorems I want to look at that help with analyzing RC circuits. So this particular theorem involves computing the impedance of a network that consists of one capacitor and however many resistors that you want. The idea is that you can find the impedance in the Laplace domain here by computing what the resistance looks like at DC. So at DC, you open up all the capacitors and then you append to it this ratio. So S here is a Laplace domain variable, but we're pretty much just going to plug J omega in for S to get a frequency response. So tau SC is a short circuit time constant. That's a time constant computed by taking the terminals of the network and shorting them together. TOC is the open circuit time constant. So that's a time constant computed leaving those terminals open. Now to compute the time constants, what you do is you imagine taking some wire cutters and snipping out the capacitor and replacing it with some kind of ohmmeter to measure the resistance seen looking out of the terminals of the place where the capacitor was. So in this particular example, RDC is pretty easy to compute. We just open up this capacitor and I have this series combination of R1 and R2. And then I generally like to compute the open circuit time constant next because it's usually the easiest. If we don't have anything hooked over here, R1 might as well not be in the circuit. So when we take our wire cutters and snip here and then put an ohmmeter in, we just see R2, but we have to remember to multiply by C. All right, now let's talk about the short circuit time constant. So the short circuit time constant, I'll take this R1 and connect it all the way across over here. And it's a little hard to see, but if I imagine flipping this up, I see that when I take my wire cutters, what I'll see looking out of where the capacitor was is R1 in parallel with R2, and I have to remember to multiply by C to get the time constant. So here's how I remember that the short circuit time constant goes in the numerator and the open circuit goes in the denominator. I like to think about people who make good music and that makes me think about Peter Gabriel. And Peter Gabriel released an album called So. And so I spell the word So going top to bottom in my head. So the S goes on top and the O goes on bottom. I realize that memory aid may only work for me. So I learned about this theorem from my colleague Marshall Leach and Marshall couldn't remember where he originally saw it, but I later learned from a viewer on YouTube that this is a special case of what's called the extra element theorem. So let's do a slightly more complicated example. To compute RDC, I open up this capacitor and I wind up with R1 in series with the parallel combination. In one of the branches of that parallel combination, I have R2. And in the other branch, I'll have R3 in series with R4. Remember, we opened up the cap to compute the DC value. All right, so the open circuit time constant has R1 just dangling, so it might as well not be in the circuit. And so if we take the capacitor and take our wire clippers here and put an ohmmeter, we'll see R4 in parallel with R3 in series with R2, but I need to remember to multiply by C in order to get a time constant. A very common mistake I personally make is to forget to put in that C. And let's see, for the short circuit time constant, I take the left edge of R1 and I connect it to the right edge over here. And basically this looks like the open circuit time constant, except where I originally had R2 I now have R1 in parallel with R2. All right, now I have all of our pieces. Now, you don't have to use this theorem, and in fact, I'm guessing that most students haven't seen this theorem. You can just use ordinary circuit theory from a class like EC2040, and let's try that. So this is the expression we computed using the theorem. We plug in RDC, and the time constant for the short circuit case and the time constant for the open circuit case. Now, if I were to compute this in a more straightforward way, 
I would have R4 in parallel with the impedance of the capacitor, which is just 1 over SC. That is in series with R3. That mess is in parallel with R2. And then we would just add the R1 in series. So you can take this, do a bunch of algebra on it, and make it look like that, but it is extremely painful to do so. Now, you might look at this and think, wait a minute, this is a more compact expression. And it is. But this is really convenient because it's in a form that makes it easy to make a Bode plot. Let's think about what this impedance looks like at high frequencies. So for very high frequencies, this capacitor is going to look like a short. So R4 is effectively getting shorted out. And in the algebra, that corresponds to this factor here going to zero. So this whole term here disappears. And we wind up with R1 plus R2 in parallel with R3. And I'll denote that as R infinity to indicate the resistance we get as omega goes to infinity. Now, thinking for a second about what the high-frequency asymptotics looks like for the impedance in this general form of the theorem we had earlier, well, if I were to plug in j omega for s and let omega go to infinity, then eventually these one terms get swamped, and when you plug in the j omega in the numerator and the denominator, the j's cancel, and the omegas that go to infinity cancel, and you're left with this TSC over OSC. So that goes right here. Now, if we actually plug in our values for the short circuit time constant and the open circuit time constant in our DC here, it's a bit of a mess. This more straightforward approach of just looking at the circuit and shorting the cap gives you a much cleaner answer. I will leave it as an exercise for the extremely bored viewer to slog through the algebra needed to take this expression and turn it into this expression up here at the top. Actually, don't do that, even if you're really bored. There's no reason anybody should have to suffer through that amount of algebra. So this form of the expression computed with the theorem is very convenient for making a plot of the magnitude of the impedance in a Bode plot style. So this is a little bit different way of thinking than thinking about a filter as having a voltage input and a voltage output. And we'll look at such a thing in the next lecture. But for right now, you can imagine that the current of this network is the input and then the resulting voltage is the output. So you can quickly see that this is going to have a low shelf kind of behavior because if we were to short out this cap, then we were taking this impedance R4 out of the circuit, and we're lowering the impedance. And the R infinity is what we computed on the previous slide. RDC is this quantity down here. And then in the numerator here, we have tau SC. So the upper breakpoint is at 1 over tau SC. And then down here, we have tau OC, our open circuit time constant. Let's see, I'm running out of space to draw down there. Anyway, so our lower breakpoint is 1 over tau OC.